Ezra Miller might be facing jail time for what they just did to a minor. I'm your host, Mikhail on The Rich Life, and today I'm gonna be giving you all the tea on Ezra Miller. From beloved perks of being a wallflower to becoming a rising star in Hollywood, Ezra Miller was supposed to be a queer blockbuster movie star and an activist who stood up for gender-based violence in indigenous communities. However, they were caught on video physically attacking a fan at an Iceland bar and accused of grooming an 18-year-old indigenous activist. Miller went from indie darling to Harry Potter paychecks to allegedly assaulting a minor. So here's a timeline to understand how we got here. Ezra Miller has an estimated net worth of $3 million and was born on September 30th, 1992. Ezra Miller grew up in New Jersey with their father, publisher Robert S. Miller of Workman Publishing. And Ezra's mother was a dancer and Ezra has two older sisters. They were born with a speech impediment so they turned to opera to focus on control and manipulation of the breath. They eventually overcame their stutter. In summer of 2001, Ezra starred in the Robert Wilson and Philip Glass opera, White Raven. Ezra went on to join the children's chorus at the Metropolitan Opera for two seasons. In May of 2008, After School premiered at Keynes, in which they played Robert, an internet addicted loner who has a fetish for cell phone footage. After he accidentally films the passing of twins at his boarding school, he is tasked with making a video tribute for the girls. They said in a 2018 interview with The Hollywood Reporter, quote, then I was just hooked to film. Ezra dropped out of Hobakin's Hudson School during their junior year. In May 2011, Ezra broke through with We Need to Talk About Kevin. Ezra played the titular role in the movie, which tells the story of a mother coming to the terms with the horrors her teenage son committed. While shooting, Ezra refrained from speaking with their mother for the entirety of the shoot to better inhabit the mind of their psychotic character. They said, quote, in the moments where my mind could escape Kevin's, I had this growing, gathering appreciation for everything that my mother did right. Ezra continued by saying, quote, but to bring back to the forefront of my brain this loving, empathetic relationship with my mother would have been extremely detrimental to either me or the film. So it was really essential that she uh, keep fair distance. In June 2011, Ezra was a passenger in a vehicle that was pulled over for a broken brake light in Pittsburgh while shooting Perks of Being a Wallflower. Police found a large quantity of illegal substances on them. The then 18 year old was charged with illegal substance possession, but the judge dropped the case. The actor instead faced two citations of disorderly conduct and was ordered to pay $600. They told New York Magazine, quote, I don't feel like there's any need to hide the fact that I smoke pot. They continued by saying it's a harmless herbal substance that increases sensory appreciation. After appearing together on screen in the 2010 movie Beware the Gonzo, Ezra and Zoe Karavitz became very close. Then American photographer Lauren Nolting and Ezra dated for a couple months from 2011 to 2012. Then in 2013, she started dating model Aaron Erb. The two also got engaged when Aaron was in their senior year of high school in May 2014. In September of 2012, Perks of Being a Wallflower was showcased at the Toronto Film Festival. Ezra co-starred as Patrick Stewart, a gay high school senior who, together with Sam, played by Emma Watson, takes depressed freshman Charlie, played by Logan Lerman, under their wing. During the press tour for Perks of Being a Wallflower, Ezra talked about school bullying and officially came out. They told Out Magazine, quote, I'm queer. They continued by saying, I have a lot of really wonderful friends who are very different sexes and genders. I'm very much in love with no one in particular. I've been trying to figure out relationships, you know? They had even once said in an interview, quote, I don't identify as a man. I don't identify as a woman. I barely identify as human. Ezra had also said that they are bisexual. In March of 2013, Greenpeace announced that Ezra would travel to the North Pole in early April to plant a flag for the future, a capsule containing a petition with nearly 3 million signatures to protect the Arctic. In October of 2014, Miller was cast as the Flash in the DC Comics Cinematic Universe, beating out Grant Gustin, who plays the character in the CW series of the same name. In January 2015, Kyle Patrick Alvarez's Stanford Prison Experiment premiered at the Sundance Film Festival. The film explores the 1971 psychological experiment conducted by a Stanford professor, Philip Zimbardo, where male volunteers were randomly assigned to the roles of prisoners or guards. Over the course of five days, the guards increasingly brutalized the prisoners, forcing the unethical experiment to end on its sixth day. In a leading role, Ezra portrayed one of the prisoners. In March 2015, Miller released their first official EP with band Son of an Illustrious Father, which they've been linked to as early as 2011, describing the band as helping them discover their relationship to the world and mental illness. Ezra said in a 2018 interview, quote, I think there was a lot of mental illness that I did not know how to manage or deal with in the earliest of times of the band. I was 15 or 16, I didn't have any real means of monitoring myself, and I was also working in film and having this strange type of exposure. I was feeling insecure about that relationship to the world and what it would actually mean for me. I was feeling insecure in my decisions up to that point to take that path, and I was feeling insecure about the ways it 
that held the potential to really separate me from people I love. That was tied into the illness that I was discovering in myself. In June of 2015, Ezra was in the talks for a role in the Harry Potter spinoff Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. This was their second role in a major studio franchise. In March of 2016, Warner Bros. released Batman vs. Superman Dawn of Justice, which was where Ezra made their first appearance as The Flash. In August 2016, Suicide Squad premiered where Ezra made their second appearance as The Flash. Then in November 2016, Ezra starred as Credence Barebone in Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, where they played Aberforth's son. In July 2017, after asking fans why their character The Flash would have trouble getting drunk at the San Diego Comic-Con event, someone in the crowd correctly answered that The Flash's metabolic rate makes getting tipsy difficult. Another fan jokingly asked Ezra to smell their breath to be sure. Ezra responded by kissing the fan on the mouth without clear consent. In July 2018, Miller cosplayed as Toadette from Mario Kart and gave a bizarre red carpet interview to Clever News in the character. With their mushroom poses in tow, Miller answers questions in gibberish and scurries off when the interviewer asks them if they need a cocktail. Little odd if you ask me, but that's just my opinion. In April 2020, in a sense deleted tweet, a disturbing video alleges to show Ezra choking a woman and throwing her to the ground at a bar in Iceland. Variety confirms that the altercation took place at the trendy bar and employees identified Ezra in the video. The seven second clip made its rounds on Twitter on April 6th and showed a person saying, oh, you wanna fight, that's what you wanna do, to a woman in a bar. She appears to be jokingly readying herself for a fight. The person was identified as Ezra. They then grabbed the woman by the throat and threw her to the ground. Restaurant staff escort Ezra from the premises. They were not under investigation by authorities following the incident. In March 2022, Miller was arrested in Hawaii and charged with disorderly conduct and harassment following a physical confrontation with patrons at a karaoke bar. In a public statement from the Hawaii Police Department Hilo Patrol, police alleged that Ezra became agitated while patrons began singing a karaoke rendition of Shallow from A Star Is Born. They began yelling obscenities at the patrons and grabbed a microphone from a woman singing karaoke and later lunged at a man playing darts according to police. The bar owner asked Miller to calm down several times to no avail, police state. Miller's $500 bail was paid by a couple they lived with at a hostel. Then the couple who lived with Ezra at the hostel filed a restraining order against them. In documents obtained by Raider Online, the couple asked the court to order Ezra to not contact them in any form and to stay away from their home and places of work. Allegedly, Ezra stole the wife's passport and the husband's wallet, which contained his credit cards, social security card, and driver's license. However, it's unclear whether the items were returned or not. A judge granted the couple the restraining order the following day. Then the order was dropped in mid-April. Then around the same time, sources told Rolling Stone that Warner Bros. and DC executives held an emergency and prompt meeting to discuss Ezra's recent controversies and their future with the studio. According to a knowledgeable source, the consensus in the room was to hit pause on any future projects involving Miller, including possible appearances in the DC Extended Universe. Now more recently, the parents of an 18-year-old activist, Gibson Iron Eyes, who is non-binary, accuses Ezra of grooming their child. In court documents obtained by TMZ from the Standing Rock Tribal Court, Gibson's parents, attorney and activist Chase Iron Eyes, and pediatrician Sarah Jumping Eagle seek intervention from the court, alleging that Miller has been involved with their child since they were 12. A judge signed the request for a protective order, which says Ezra cannot contact the child, Sarah, or Chase, or be within 100 yards of the residence. Gibson's parents say that Ezra and Gibson remain on the run, while the court has not been able to locate or serve the actor because their whereabouts are unknown. And that's everything on Ezra Miller. Make sure to let us know in the comments below what you want us to talk about in future videos, and I'll see you guys next time.